Brisbane Yamaha nose boats. Hi, I'm Aaron, the owner of Brisbane Yamaha, and today we've got a comparison. Had a few people ring up and say, why don't you do a comparison? Why don't you do, you know, Formosa? Why don't you do a bar crusher? Well, here we go. What we're gonna do is a bar crusher, 615C against a Trident. Now I want to do a yellow fin, but I didn't, I only had a big yellow, bigger yellow fin. So I've got like 10 in the yard, but they're all bigger or smaller and it wasn't fair. So I will do a yellow fin because we've got the new ones. But let's have a look because I like Bar Crusher. I've owned Bar Crusher myself and we buy and sell Bar Crusher. And right from the start, let me tell you, the Bar Crusher is a good Australian business. Good people who run it. The dealers are fantastic. So don't think I'm going to slag the boat off. I just think we make some better ones. Let's have a look at this. Now, beautiful looking boat. I like them. Let's have a look at some sizes. Now, Michael, hold that and we'll go from the bow sprit. We'll go from the bow sprit, not round, no, right at the front, to the back. You there, Michael? Yep. 620. All right, that's interesting. Have a look at here, 6220. Now come up near with the, let's go over the seats. What do we got here? Six, we've got two, two, five. Two, two, zero, five. Go back to the back. What do we have here? Two, 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 two. Are you on there, Michael? Yep. Two meters, 20 at the back there. Now measure from the inside. Have a look at that, Dan. Inside, we've got one, six, seven. Measure up here just to see. One metre seven. One metre six and a half. To the back of the seats, we've got virtually one and a half. It's a bit more, it's a bit less than that, 140, but let's say 1.1. So a metre and a half of actually cockpit, spur, cockpit by the 2.2. Now, bar crushes, I like the paint on it. We've got the folding top you know, that comes down, the windscreen folds over, the top comes down in rough weather or for towing. Come up the front here, Dan. We've got the Sarka anchor with an anchor winch that we do. Good quality winch on there. We've got the Bar Crusher catch and release, which works the same. They're all the same now. Well, this one works on a bungee. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit, well, you let go of the bungee and it sits down or you hook the bungee on. Don't know if it's ingenious or agricultural. Now have a look at the hull, because I like Bar Crusher trailers. They're custom made for the boat. Rollers down the centre, which all, fiber, uh, all aluminium boats should have. Now that hull is four mil, had the sides of five, four mil. So four and four, and then it's got these skids. Come down here, Dan, and have a look. And it's got the skids that straighten it up and put it in. That all looks nice, bearing buddies. Come to the back here, Dan. We've got a good quality dive style ladder with trim tabs. And then you can come back and see that flooding hull. And it's got, it's got a special hull. Now, the hull there, you can see, they're, instead of just being a point like that, they've put a little bit more shape in it to give it a little bit better lift and take off. And I, I think it probably does. And there's half of like a pod here. This pod comes back a fair bit too, doesn't it? Look at that, 460. Little bait, little burly bucket here. A couple of holes coming off the bait board. And we've put a 150 Yamaha on it. Live bait tank there. Not with a window and we'll look inside. Overall, a pretty good looking boat. We'll look at it in a sec. Let's have a look here. We've got the aluminium, we've got the aluminium Quintrax trailer. Catch and release. You know, winch. I probably think the Bar Crusher winch looks better. I'll talk to Paul Phelan about that, but I think the catch and release is better. Now look at that hull. Now the Bar Crusher had a four mil hull and the, the Quinny, the Triton's got a five mil hull. The Triton's got three mil sides, the Bar Crusher had four. So the Quinny's got a mil thicker on the bottom and a mil shorter on the sides. Whether, whether that matters, it probably doesn't. Now, on the surface, the Quinny looks massive. But when you measure it, here you go, Michael. Don't go around the hull either, that looks sus. So what we got here, 
Good, there's six four. So it's a little bit longer. Come on the other side, Michael. 2.38, so we're a bit wider. Come back up to the seats. Oh God. 2.44. It's virtually maximum width. 2.44. Now measure while you're there on the inside. What do we got there? 1.85. Go right back to the back. 1.8. Let me see how much let go, Michael, in the cockpit space. One point five to here. Come back over the bar crusher. That doesn't seem right. The bar crusher looks like it's got way more fishing room. Well, let's have a look at it. Come back to that, Michael. We want to get this. It doesn't. It's got the same. That's interesting. Doesn't look like that. Looks like the bar crush is way further forward. But anyway, let's have a look inside. All right, the Trident, we've got a 130 on it. Now, Dan's gonna put the specs on the 150. He's gonna put the specs up on the bar crush and the specs up on the Trident for you when we do it. Good looking ladder. I like the seats. But let's look back here. This is an interesting one. Surprising, isn't it? You know, surprising. What they do, yeah, 1.6 in the middle there. Now, we've, they've got a very good rear seat. See that? Which comes across, it comes across the transom door, but I think it's a pretty good thing. It's, you know, it's not the most comfortable, but I'd be driving all the time. And it, it looks solid and it stacks away very nicely. Now behind that, you've got the dual batteries. You've got some of that beautiful Brisbane Yamaha wiring that we do. Bait board. Aluminium bait board, a couple of holders, three rod holders there. You got some good alloy rod holders. You got a live bait tank over here. Have a look in there, Dan, because it's a good size. You get plenty of fish in there. You put some ice in there, put some beers in there if you want. I'd put some slimies, a couple of mullet. Now, we can get the feet underneath. And what we got, let's measure this height here. Because what bar crusher do to the top, is 1.178 1. quite a high side and like you know i'm 64 and i could fish comfortably in the bar crusher i like that let's have a look under the floor we've got a kill tank here virtually useless you know i don't know what you'd put in there but you've got a built a kill tank you've got the uh you, you've got your live bait tank a live bait pump there and you've got your bilge pump I don't think it's an automatic one, but that's all right. It's all sealed off and it all looks nice. Tackle storage. You can move the seats around. Bolster seats. You know, sit back. You can lean back and watch your rods if you're trawling. And I, I think that's all awesome. Up the front here, let's have a look. Ergonomics wise. I'll move that up and let's see. <coughs> move that. slides around that's pretty good you've got the Yamaha Lawrence on it radio ergonomics feel pretty good I'll move that back see how it is you know and like you'd think good switch panels you've got the uh, trim tabs on it and I could drive that standing up the cover you know if it gets rough you just pull that down how does that come down yeah just come down like that Clip it off if it got rough or you're towing in the car. Comes up, good quality struts. Now, clears that go round it. Whole windscreen folds down. Up in here. Well, you're not sleeping in there, that's for sure. You're not sleeping or having a kip. Under the floor, you got a little porta potty. And mattresses, good quality seats. I think it's a pretty good boat. But, let me just show you something that I don't understand and I don't know even know if it's legal and I want someone to look at this that is the fuel filler now we've got the fuel filler in the bottom of the boat and uh, that's the only way to fill the fuel and I don't know how you go in a service station in an enclosed area and fill that but anyway what it does let me tell you 
One of the secrets of a bar crusher are these high sides. It looks narrow, but it's not. That is the bottom of the boat. The fuel tank is part of the boat in a bar crusher. And that's why the filler's in the boat, because you can't come through the sides. And what that does, it lowers the center of gravity. And that's why they ride better. Well, better than what? Well, don't know, but look, we're gonna go out and it's getting a bit rough and waiting for the weather to come up. Uh, and so, just a recap. So the fuel tank is in the hull, is actually part of the hull. It's right at the bottom, and that allows you to lower the floor, which lowers the center of gravity of the boat. So, I'm gonna go outside. So see that, that bit there? That, on the other side's outside. This is the fuel tank. That levels the floor. And so that gives you that depth, all right? I'll get that tape measure and measure it, because it took me a bit to work this out. I couldn't work out why. How the bar crusher have made this boat look, see how the, the Trident looks so much taller? Because, and I'll run over, stay there, the floor is there on a trident, not down here. The floor's up there. Now, does that matter? I don't know. I filled it up with fuel. I was half freaking out. I'm not sure you're allowed to do that. You're not allowed to fill a fuel container in your boot. I just noticed something else. When you come to get in, like, that's the live, that's the transom door. And then because the seat's there, you kind of got this big, this big drop down. Now it's no, no, no problem for me with long legs, but I've never seen another boat like that. And it's probably good, but I just thought I'd show you. Now let's look at the Trident. So what we got, kill tank, half Scheisenhausen, but it's probably deeper and it'll still work. Burley live bait tank. Probably same size, but it's got a, a window. We've got a lounge that goes across the back. You can get into your batteries, you know. You've got another two rod holders, a bit of a storage that runs out there. Welded in solid rod holders, good quality cleats on it. There are no cleats. Bar crushers don't have cleats. Why not? What's going on over there? You must have to tie it off on the rails. Michael, go and have a look at that. Has anyone ever noticed that before? Is there a cleat anywhere on it? And there's probably nothing wrong with tying off on rails. Quintrex has got a cleat. Now, up into the cabin. What have we got? Good quality seat. Ergonomics, I can stand in it. Volvo trim tabs, Yamaha gauges, same 703. Got a glove box. We've got no glove box over there. Got the radio and everything. Got a bit more storage here, but we don't have the tackle storage that uh, the bar crusher had. Uh, still can't sleep in them, but we've got a little bit of, there's another bilge up the front, auto bilge there. Sit in here and have sandwiches or whatever. Yeah, it's all neat and tidy. We just said that the bar crusher is self-draining deck. It's actually not. It runs into the bilge and then builds it out. I don't have a problem with that. With the Quintrex, because the bar crusher floors right down the bottom, you can't run water out. It'll all run in, you get wet feet. Because the Quintrex is a bit higher, we've got scuppers, all right? So that's one of the trade-offs. And I suppose in a bar crusher, the bilge pump would just pump it all out. In a, in a Trident, if you're doing it, it'll all just run out. No, no major deal unless you want scuppers. This all folds down too and opens up and you can walk through. It's got the big opening to the anchor and we do stress, we do anchor winches as well. This one doesn't have one, but it's got a good door. Bro through with a window, window and opening door. So let's go on the water and see how these two babies run, eh? Crusher 615C. Let's have a look how it goes. Watch this hull. I'll sit down. I've trimmed down. We've got the 150. 
And, all right. So jog into that wave. Give it a little bit. And it's quite good, really. Well, sloth, here's a little wave, half a metre. Know, half a metre to a metre, I'll give it a bit, get on top of one of them. And you see, oh, well, that's squirting it out beautifully, really. Well, it squirts it out the side. Get that bone up the front, Dan. And I'm with it. You know, how fast am I going? Crikey, right, Teddy. Well, probably rolls a little at 51k. We're doing 4-4, four four. we're doing 51. We've got a 150 on a 6 metre boat. Going along beautifully. I'm sitting down. Well, it makes a bit of. Where's the drone, Dan? You got us? It makes a. Oh, oh, don't turn into a wave. But a lot of boats will do that. Straight into that wave. See if you can get that hull working. Here comes one. Whoa, whoa. Uh, land soft. Makes a bit of noise, but land soft. If I went any faster, I'd probably stand up, and that's what most people would do. Let's have a look. We're still doing, we're doing 50. I think I'm going to have to stand up. No, it'll be all right. Let's just sit down, because I normally do. Let's turn in. Oh, that bangs in a bit. It's a little bit of a jar, but it's still okay. Not a bad boat. You know, certainly better than, than a lot. And we'll see how the Trident runs in exactly the same. Flicking over the top. 4, 7, 54, and 4, 7, put that down. But you don't want to turn into a wave. It doesn't handle that probably as good as the Millennium Hull. But I'm dry, you know. I'd heard that the Bar Crusher was very wet. I had a 7, 6, and that used to be wet. But this 6, 1, 5, I tell you, I don't know if I'd bring my grandma out in it, but my wife would love it. Kids would love it. And she roars with that Yamaha 150. Doesn't matter what you put a 150 on, it just goes, doesn't it? Look at it. Trim it up. You, oh, don't trim it up. You trim it down. What you do is you have your nose down on these things a bit. Hasn't need a lot of trim. Hasn't a lot of trim. Oh, oh this is an interesting way. Oh, beautiful. It actually handled that very nicely, I've got to say. Let's do a couple of turns, see how it goes into a following seat turning on this. You saw me the other day in a baseboard turning. Turn beautiful. A little bit of a follow and see. What I just wanted to know is whether when you come over in a following sea, whether that sharp nose was going to make it breach and turn. But it seems to be cutting through. It doesn't fall on its side and I haven't had to use trim. I do have uh, I have got the motor trimmed right in and I found that it's it's better, it likes it better with the nose down. And I'll turn around. Whoa, got a little bit wet there. Dan got a bit wet into it. Running across the going across that wave, you know. Not a lot of boats like it, and with a sharp V like a bar crusher, I'll probably just put a little bit more trim tab on it and what are we doing? We're doing 37, 41 k's, and we're jogging along, and if I was going to Tangaluma, that's good. You know, let's turn around. Digging deep, heading out, and I'll give it a little bit of a roar. See how that gamma, trim it out a little bit. <coughs> Follow and see, popping in. Yeah, that come down nice and soft made a bit of noise but it was soft you can feel it squirting it out <coughs> squirts the wave out a little bit more forward than a yellow fin and a little bit more forward than a, than a quinny but probably the same as a lot of uh, play boats you ready? you go first because i got a 150 150 is always going to be the 130 let's see I'll tell you what, that Quinny's getting lost. Oh shit, I'm going flat out now. Bastard. I'm flat out. What am I doing? Oh, oh, I've got to stand up.
Holy crackers, look at that! Fly free, I'm flat out with a 150, and I've only just left the 130 behind. That's interesting. Come back here. Were you flat out? That was interesting, wasn't it? What I will say is the Quintrex dryer so far, and we're gonna go in that in a minute. You know I've been in lots of Tridents, I like them. I like this bar crusher too, but I actually think, I actually think that it hits harder than that. Now this is a surprising thing, because bar crushers are a lot of money. Let's go again, this time I'm standing up. And you've been sitting down the whole time? No, oh, they're sitting down. All right, tell me when. I got the jump on him this time. I'm not gonna let some young punk get me. I got him. <coughs> it, it, oh, I'm standing up. It's jumping waves. But well, that's getting along. But I tell you what, that 130 is getting along pretty bloody good. Oh, he's taking speed. He must have trimmed down on me. I told you he's a good mechanic. I'm trimming right out. Hang on, Dan. Hang on. Let's not let this kid beat us. Got him now! Hang on! Keep going all right! What are we doing? We're doing 60, 70, we've got the legs! See? There you go, slow down! Now I want to show you something interesting. You know how I was telling you that the floor's low? The floor's actually like 200 mil below the water. Have a look back here. That, the seat's here. My, so what, what happens is you're actually sitting below the water line and that gives it. Now have a look at the back. Now show that at the back when I reverse up. Stand on that side, Dan. Make it look fair. God. You know, I don't know about all you game fishermen, but I'm not backing. Hey, hey. Take it easy. Take it easy. I'm going to do that again. Well, hold on. Let's watch that because that, that's something wrong here. Let's have a look at this. I haven't got a lot on it. Look, watch the motor and you watch this. Now, what I want to say is, that's not a good feature. Because if you were fighting to fish, and as you, a lot of you know, I started Blue Water Boats and Sport Fishing Magazine, I used to carry the boss's butt rods and his lift heavy things for him. That's why I got a bad back. But when you're backing up on billies and fighting big fish, this thing's got a problem. And we'll do it the same in a Triton, but because the floor's low, Dan casts a big shadow, but look at this. Have a look at this. There's no water in it, and they're self-draining, so the bilge will pump it out, but I don't know. You decide, come up beside me, Gomez. And we're going to go in exactly the same wave, and we're going to see how these hulls work. The bar crusher against the Millennium, you know, awesome things. Bar crushers are awesome. Two of Australia's greatest boats made. You know, here we go. Come on, stay on the wave with me, gamers. Now, I said he was a good mechanic. I didn't say he was the smartest, but he is actually. Go over here, look, gets off. And we're just jogging along, and we're sitting down. And look at that. You know, if you made out a bar crusher, you had a new had a, a 610 Trident, that'd be lovely. You'd be cute, wouldn't you? Both jogging along. Oh, I think, I'm telling you, I think the Triton's got it up for a bar crusher. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, and I would love to get it in some bigger waves, and I'm probably biased. So don't be phoning me up and telling me stuff, but I'm trying not to be biased. All right, I'm just saying, I think the Millennium Hull at this size is better. And what we're gonna do, I'll tell you what, it's drier, but it's getting along beautiful. So what I've done, we've swapped. I wanted to have a go with this Triton, because I think Michael might be driving it too good. Let's have a look, we'll go on a follow and see, then we'll turn around. The bar crusher really does push it out and down at the front. Out and straight down. Here we are in the Trident. 610. It's soft. 
Doesn't want to breach. Has trim tabs, but I'm not touching it. And it's easy. It is easy, actually. Doesn't feel that much different. I think probably, it's probably the roar of the 150. I'll lock this seat off. It's feeling all right. I don't mind it. See, the floor on this is up here. Remember I was showing you? So I'm actually above, so you can have a self-draining deck. Now, if I look at the back, the water's not up to it. Now, where did you stand last time, Dan? Because people are going to want to measure it. Don't worry about that. They'll say, oh, you rigged it, Aaron. You rigged it. So what we're going to do, like we did with the bar crusher, how I was saying the floor's lower, and it was taking a bit of water, right, when I was backing up. The only time you back up when you're fighting a fish, and I normally turn around and chase it, so don't send me abusive emails, but sometimes you do have to back up, right? And sometimes people want to know that. That's the only reason I'm bringing it up. Now, so let's say I was backing up on a fish, Dan's on a, Dan's on a big stripe, big grander off cans or something, you know? He wishes. Well, it still splashes. You can, you can see it's high, but what we're not going to do is take water. We've got this big transom door. Whether it matters or not, I don't know, but it is a little bit higher. We've done it in a little bit of a 610 Trident, 615 Bar Crusher. Both really good boats. I think it's value for money, the Trident's better, right? I'm not saying the Bar Crusher's not a good boat, but all I'm saying is, why don't you have a look at both? and see what one suits you. And I'll see you on the water. Oh yeah, either way, bye Yamaha, do yourself a favour.